The DJI Mini 4 Pro has got many of the functions and features of larger and more expensive models from DJI. And I keep on getting requests for a simple video on the best settings for the smoothest flying for video. So here's five or six crucial settings that will make all the difference for you. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones. And yes, as I said, Mini 4 Pro has got a fair few functions and settings that can make your flying super smooth or a complete jerky disaster. So for those of you that have just got the Mini 4 Pro as your first drone, here are a few simple settings that will help smooth everything out for you when you're flying around. First off though, we need to get the little beast up in the air as you wanna see what happens when you change the settings so that way you can work out exactly what's best setting for you. Nice little hum. So look, first off, what we wanna do is check the obstacle avoidance settings. Now to get there, as ever, you're gonna do the three dots, top right. Very first tab you see is called safety. And the very first option you've got is the obstacle avoidance action. Now I always used to say, keep it in brake mode. When you have it in brake mode, you can see what happens here when you just tap the sticks, move slightly, but nice and gently. So up until recently, brake mode was absolutely perfect for me. Bypass mode was the complete opposite. If I change it to bypass mode, little stick, all very jerky and jumpy, very flighty until recently. Now there is a second option for bypass mode called nifty mode. And this is actually a brilliant, brilliant new mode. Because now when you have it in nifty mode, a slight tap it's nowhere near as jumpy as normal bypass mode. And this is actually what I think is the very best setting to keep it in. I did a little video on nifty mode the other week and it really does make the obstacle avoidance a lot better. It makes it far less aggressive. It does let you fly closer to obstacles but without the drone swerving wildly. So have a play, make sure you don't crash. But for me, nifty mode is a brilliant setting and it's the setting I leave my drone in now uh, all the time. So next up, I wanna go into the advanced gimbal and uh, expo settings. So again, uh, three dots top right, but go over to the next tab, control, and you'll see here, you scroll down, you've got there gain and expo tuning. Now. This is such a powerful screen and it affects so many aspects of how you fly. So it is crucial that you get these right. As you can see here, you've got three sets of settings in here. You've got cine mode, you've got normal, and you've got sport mode. Any change you make in these three respective sets of settings will only be reflected when you're flying in that particular flight mode. Now, it is a bit of a busy old screen, this one. Not everything is crucial, but some of them are. So I'm only gonna focus on the ones that I think are really important for you today. Uh, first off, max horizontal speed. Now, this is literally how fast you can fly. But for me, it's only useful to reduce this when you're in flying in cine mode, when you might want to be flying uh, very gently and slowly, especially if you're flying through woods and trees. If you're flying up high though, it's probably best to leave it at its higher value. So for me, Slow it down maybe in cine mode, leave it up high for the other modes as well. Now below that you've got max ascent speed and max descent speed. To be honest, I don't think these make much difference to the smoothness of your flying. The gimbal is very good at um, smoothing things out and I can't really see much of a reason or a scenario where you'd want to reduce how fast your drone is ascending or descending. So max ascent, max descent, just leave them up high, you'll be fine but it is the next setting on this screen that I think is the single most important setting to get right and it has the biggest effect on your video. It's uh, called the max angular velocity or it's your speed, which is literally how fast the drone swivels round left or right. And it is easily the worst thing I see on videos and yet it is so easy to fix. So let's see what happens when you have this setting wrong, max angular velocity right up high, 120. Now when you do the left stick, woof straight round, very sharp, nasty turns. As I said, one of the ugliest things you can see on a video. So for this setting, I absolutely keep it right down, probably around 30, 30 degrees per second. That will bring things down 
a lot smoother so it's a much slower turn and obviously that's a lot more that's a lot better for your video but there's another setting just below that so if you have a quick look below said it was called manga max angular velocity it was also known as your well below that you've got something called the your smoothness your smoothness is literally a little buffer to soften the start and stop motion of the turn so if we have uh let's let's um just to make things a little bit easy let's push this up high but then put the your smoothness down low let go and it stops dead and again let go stops dead not very smooth at all now if we increase that your smoothness up to say the uh about 80 getting on 90 now when you start turning see how it starts slowly and when i let go it carries on and comes to a gradual halt 80 might be a little bit too high maybe have it around 60 you want it just to start gently and to stop gently as well but these are the two most important settings, I think, for getting smooth camera movement. The yaw, how quickly things turn, and the yaw smoothness, how quickly it starts or slowly it starts, and how slowly it comes to a stop again. So, very, very important little setting there. Right, let's crack on, because it's getting chilly and I'm getting cold. <laughs> Brake sensitivity, right, let's have a little look at that. Now I played around with brake sensitivity on the Mini 3 Pro when DJI introduced this function earlier this year. My advice is definitely leave this up high to its maximum. It is literally how fast you want the drone to stop when you let go of the sticks in whichever direction you're flying. Now I'm sorry, the way I see it, when you let go of the sticks, you want the drone to stop. It doesn't generally affect the smoothness of the video because the gimbal is pretty good at uh, smoothing things out but it will have plenty of impact if it takes so long to slow down that it sails into something. Uh, now, in fairness, the obstacle avoidance is still working, so you shouldn't plow into anything as long as you're not in sports mode. But to me, I, don't, I still don't understand why you would want to slow down the braking action of a drone when you let go of the sticks. So for me, I leave the brake sensitivity up high. Right, um, scrolling down below brake sensitivity, you've got a little graph, EXP. Now, in truth, these are pretty much, I think, only helpful if you've got fat fingers, clumsy fingers like me. They affect how much stick movement you need to put in versus how much movement you're going to get on the drone itself. Um, I really don't want to spend too much time on this, but basically, look, let's have a look at the yaw. The yaw is good. Um, if we adjust the slider so that you have a, quite a flat, you see the blue line there is changing to get quite flat. Now, with the yaw tiny bit of stick movement and it only just starts to move when I start moving the stick significantly. Let's just take it to the other extreme, move the yaw right up to the top. Now tiny little stick movement and the drone immediately starts to turn. So that's all the EXP settings do. They do it for, you've got up down, you've got yaw and you've got the, uh, the, the pitch as well. All it is is basically how much stick movement do you need to actually move the stick before you start getting a movement on the drone now in truth i don't think it makes a massive difference to the smoothness of your flight but at least it's useful to know what they do but it's the next one down at the bottom called max control speed for me again very very important for smooth video uh, max control speed otherwise known as gimbal pitch it's how fast the gimbal pitches up and down when you move the little wheel on the back of the remote for me i want this right down i want a, probably around i don't know 30 degrees per second i want a nice slow gentle pitch when i move that wheel unless i'm in sports mode so cine mode you want this really nice and low again let's just have a look at how it actually uh, affects the movement and max control speed right down to well let's put it right up first of all so now straight down straight up um, not very nice at all conversely if you get the uh, value down say 10 12 full lock a lot slower maybe too slow again as ever you got to play with these settings and work out what's best for you Below that though, you again have this smoothness, this little buffer setting, which again is a really, really useful little thing. It softens the start and softens the end movements. Again, if we have that right down, and let's uh, just have a bit of a, there we go, a bit of, so now when I start moving, it starts and let go of the wheel and it stops dead. 
very sudden, very abrupt. Let's move the smoothness up. And again, when you press, when you start it, it starts when they let go of the wheel, comes to a gradual stop. So for me, I like to have the control speed down low, not too low, but uh, probably around 30 or 40, but I want that tilt smoothness high. So it starts gently and comes to a stop gently. And that really is it. I mean, there are loads and loads of other settings you can play around with uh, in the app. But for me, for smooth flying, the ones I've gone through today are probably the most critical ones. And uh, yeah, definitely the ones you absolutely have to get right. My advice, do what I've done here. Just get the drone up in the air, keep it low down, keep it close to you and have a play around. Move some of the settings to an extreme so you can actually see exactly what it's doing and then find out the exact value for, uh, for your style of flying. I will put my preferred values down in the uh, comments below. But really, as I say, I think you wanna work out what's best for your style of flying. Remember, crucially, up the top, you've got three sets of settings. So make sure you have got the, uh, you're changing the settings in the corresponding flight mode that you're actually in as well. Otherwise, you'll be making changes and nothing will actually change. Anyway, look, bit of a chilly old day today and it's chilly for the next few uh, days as well. So that's it. As ever, look, just give me a little thumbs up, help the video along. Um, as ever, until next time, have fun, happy flying.